the Wayne Ayers Podcast. The Wayne Ayers Podcast. Woohoo! Time to wake your ass up for a blessed day. What's up, everybody? This is Wayner's Podcast, episode 66, the first podcast of 2023. Got a very special guest. Katie Douglas is coming in here from Jenny and Georgia. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. Okay, cool. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, you excited for like Christmas and everything right now? Man, I'm trying to be. I've been trying to get into the Christmas spirit lately. I think it's uh, uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> It'll start. <laughs> no. How about you? Excited for the uh, holiday? Uh, yeah, man. Not, I mean, I always hang out with my family, so it's like I always see you guys. So it's like, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> That's nice. Where's uh, yeah. you? I'm in LA. You're in LA. All right, cool. Yeah. So Where you, you're, you're in um uh Canada, right? Toronto, yeah. I'm in Toronto right now. Oh, I was just in Toronto for my um, cousin's wedding in, in August. Oh no way. Oh yeah, August is beautiful. Toronto. Yeah. The Toronto yeah, Toronto is very beautiful in the summertime. I remember I went in the uh, winter. I was like, oh, it's a little too cold for me. That's right, Jay. <laughs> but no, summertime is like beautiful. Everybody like, out in the streets is like yeah. so much things to do. So no, Toronto Toronto's a beautiful city. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Um, let's get into it. You know, Ginny George, uh, Ginny and Georgia season two is around the corner. Like, how does that feel? It's really exciting. I feel like, like in a weird way, we're more excited about season two coming out than we were about season one coming out. Because I just, I don't feel like we didn't expect to get the reaction that it got the first time around. We were kind of, it like exceeded everybody's expectations, but I guess now we kind of know who's watching and that it, that a lot of people are excited about it. So it's cool. It's like a totally different experience. I know like fans reaction is like, oh, you're just saying it's like crazy and everything. Have you even got like a, a message from a fan that was like, oh my God, like this was like so heartwarming or I didn't know this character would actually like impact people's lives. Like it has, it, like it has. Yeah, man. I like every one that I get has been like, um, very touching I, I've, I have been getting like a lot of um people reaching out saying that they uh felt represented by the character that I play which is so cool and I'm just I'm really glad that they had that and uh yeah no I think about like if, if I've ever had an interaction with with you or if, like if I've met you on the street like I think about that all the time that is so cool to me so no that's amazing I know like Abby goes to like a lot like during the first season, like yeah, how she's did... probably like odd character. <laughs> yeah. uh, how does she? How does she like cope with things in season two? Yeah, Abby copes. Well, I kind of um, as you know, I guess the the season picks up almost exactly where we left off. So if you remember, um, it was kind of like it was very explosive, and it ended on like a cliffhanger. So basically, all the characters are picking it picking up uh, the pieces um, or like digging themselves out of the hole that they're in. So um, I don't know, I, I uh, you can see the characters kind of like dealing with their shit in a very idiosyncratic way, but um, I kind of wanted to see Abby uh, kind of uh, find something special about herself and own herself a little bit more rather than being insecure about her flaws. Like she's, she's she just kind of, trucks through it with a sense of humor and a sense of of self and uh you know I, I i mean i hope that comes across for the people uh watching who like need to see that so did like does she have to go through any other challenges kind of like having like her parents being divorced and the, the body dysmorphia like is she going to endure any other challenge kind of like can we give abby some peace this season well i guess i have to see it i mean i i know a lot of people are wanting to see that but you know when you're in high school it it never ends it never ends so you'll definitely you'll definitely see her coping in in some very some very um interesting ways <laughs> <laughs> and what's like like one thing that you like and dislike about abby oh there's a lot to like there's a lot to um dislike 
which I love about the characters. Those are usually my favorite characters, but um, I think in that there's so much to like. I I love the fact that she kind of just um, like I said, like graces through things with a sense of like humor and a sense of like like this weird cocky confidence but at the same time nobody's who they want to be really when they're in high school so she's really insecure and, and obviously she's got self-hatred and that's very relatable for people and um I don't know I just think the, the people who ended up liking her probably see either themselves in her or like see someone that they know in her and it's just she's she's very real like that person is very real and I I love I love that. I just, I, I kind of just really wanted to see a character that, that often isn't really de depicted on screen. Is there anything that's going to surprise us by Abby this season? Like the path <laughs> she goes down or is there anything like, okay, wow, that's very un Abby like to do. Yeah, I think I so. <laughs> okay. I, cool, think cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really do think so. I, and I, I just hope that strikes a chord with people. I mean, that's what the show is really good at doing is like kind of a, um, uh, I don't know, rep representing what it's like to be a teenage girl, man. Oh, yeah. Is there any, like, similarities that you have with Abby at all? Like, no? Uh, <laughs> man, at first I thought no. Because um, I, I was actually, when I read her on the page, I she reminded me of somebody else that I knew in real life. And I was channeling that other person that I knew. Um, but, you know, when it when it comes down to it, uh, absolutely, I think everyone has, like, a little bit of Abby in them. And then um, yeah, I definitely did tap into, especially that like more vulnerable aspect of her. Like, yeah, I think I think anyone could find, um, at least empathize with with that person. Oh yeah, I always wonder for like actors because I know like sometimes like when you portray portray a character like you're in some actors like in character like twenty four seven with it and it's <laughs> I know I feel like I like when I watch Evan P Peters take roles like I was like yo how does he keep doing these roles because like that has to take a toll on you somehow so yeah. like how, so how does this like how do you like like get away from it that after you have done filming the season like how do you like get away like wind down. <laughs> That's that's funny. I love how you use Evan Peters as an example because he does such like he's like such a character actor. Um, but I feel like when it comes to this stuff, I I I rarely like rarely do I want to like let it go. If I learn something from someone else's emotional experience, I'm pretty like I'm I'm usually okay with just like just walking away with it. And especially a character like Abby, I mean, I, I've I've played characters that are more out there she it's just she's a teenage girl and i've done that before i've been that before and i i uh i kind of keep her with me would you ever like take on I'm a role so like <laughs> <laughs> would you ever take on a role that would like make you have to go to those extreme lengths i'd be like i don't know how some people do it i'd be like oh like yeah oh my god yeah i think that's the dream i think that's kind of the idea is is is, is being able to to um i don't know to to, to just kind of put yourself into somebody else's experience and and tell those extreme stories because I think those are the stories that are important when it comes to uh, representing like the human experience oh yeah just true is there like do you have like a dream role sort of like you like I mean I really want to have I really want to portray this person or I really want to do this or I want to join this franchise or universe <laughs> but is there like a dream role for you oh man totally I guess if you ask any actor it would usually be um like the role that really pushes you to your limits but i i personally love um surrealism and horror and i think it would be so so cool to be able to like you know work with someone like jonathan glazer or like ari aster or yorgos lanthimos and do something kind of uh uh kind of freaky <laughs> <laughs> what's like your speaking of horror like what's like your favorite horror movie my favorite horror movie man i think the original like 1970s texas chainsaw massacre just like knocked it out of the park it was the most disturbing thing to this day i think i've watched. well no but like it, it, it's just kind of like the perfect it's just like the perfect gore movie um so i say i say that one's up there i also really love uh i also really love ari aster's stuff like hereditary obviously is like a great one um yeah. and then more like psychological stuff like i like I also really love David Lynch, and like sometimes every once in a while, if I need to like reset, I'll just watch a race or head and get that same kind of like cold feeling that I 
that I am always looking for in movies, and that seems to be the one that like does it. <laughs> Now, like for me, like I'd be like some movies that I feel like could be realistic to like get to, like I don't know if you watch Final Destination, but that movie still that movie still haunts me to the day. Like I like driving by with the logs, trucks, and everything, can't do it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it's all of your hypothetical situations happening, like it's funny, right? I, it's, it's such a, that's such a fun horror movie. Yeah, I'd be like, yo, I hate, I was like, yo, I don't even know why I was watching that movie at the time because I was like. probably like six or seven i was like why am i watching this but that movie still haunts <laughs> yeah. me today it's not like it's scary it's just like oh this actually could happen to you and this is like i would hate to go out the way some of those people would have right? man it's so interesting the desire to like scare the shit out of ourselves it's i don't know why we love it so much but there's something to that No, but that movie is cursed like, i was like i can't do it is there any yeah. is there any other genre do you like to explore like, outside of horror Man, Like yeah. I mean, I'm admittedly like a huge like movie nerd. So I, I if it's a good movie, I love every genre. Like I love, I mean, Wes Anderson makes all the best movies, and I can't even. I feel like his movies are like a genre of his own. But um, I like like comedy. Comedy would be so freaking cool if you do it right. I think it's a really really hard one to do. So that would be a challenge. No, yeah. Who like who like comedy like like what kind of like movie could you see yourself doing? What kind of like movie? Mm. Like comedy wise, like. <laughs> God, I just recently watched Bodies, 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 and I was just I really, really appreciated the way it was, like the the characters were written, like the actors too were so great. I love that type of comedy. No, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a... <laughs> I'm really Ethan Fielder right now too, and like that very deadpan. You said <laughs> what, you're you're into what? I, my Nathan buddy. Fielder. Have you? Have Nancy... you... Oh, uh, Nathan Field, man, he's he's a Canadian comedian, and he's got a couple of shows called Nathan for You and um, the Rehearsal, and he's he's got this very unique sense of like deadpan humor that is so attractive to me for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said he has. The, I'm about to go check him out, Kevin. Yeah, oh, he said. He yeah. said the re it's a rehearsal. It's like a comedy special, or is it like a the rehearsal? Uh, yeah, well, it's unlike anything you ever you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it's very unique. What is it like about? Basically, what he does is he <laughs> he he stages um, like he tries to help people who are in bad times. Like it's like for example, one of the characters really needs to uh, admit to his friend that he's been lying about having the education that he claimed to have. So what he does is that they plan out how he's going to tell his friend by like building the set of the bar they're going to go to, and then he. uh rehearses this um this confession with him so many times and the actors like he he's just i mean i'm obviously butchering the explanation but th there's something about it that's so absurd and so like um unique and like nathan fielder himself is just like a like the weirdest guy ever it's really funny and then by at one point he um he has this like mom who wants to be a mom or this woman who wants to be a mom raising pretend children in this house but the children have to like rap after like five hours so they switch switch the kids out with other kids and the kids start getting attached to the actors and it's like so weird it's so funny okay yeah, i'm gonna i'm gonna do check it the rehearsal i'm gonna check it out <laughs> no i'm glad I, i'm glad i love learning about new things and everything so i'm cool also i saw like on instagram i saw a guitar in your hand i think it was i want to say guitar are you planning to drop any music soon or you just do it as a hobby <laughs> Oh, good question. Like, probably not soon. <laughs> But I've been writing and stuff. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I think probably when I'm confident enough in it, like, down the line. But as of now, it's just a hobby. Do you play music? No, I don't. I mean, I was in choir for, like, <laughs> two years, but that's about I, it. Uh, <laughs> music. Uh, no, yeah, but I, I didn't do no. But, like, how long have you been doing music for? Man, I was little when I started. I've been kind of always... like singing and playing guitar since uh, maybe I want to say like nine so when I picked it up but. do you like play any other instruments besides a guitar uh look I get if you give me a piano like I could try to figure something out but for the most part it's like ukulele guitar um I've got a kalimba if you know what that <laughs> if anyone knows what that is Wait, no, what, like, what's a what's a kalimba like a little music box it, it sounds like all of your like video game soundtracks it's really okay cool cool yeah i want to learn how to learn how to play the ukulele 
That's the bottom. Oh yeah. For me. Yeah. <laughs> Such I think it, I think it's like a cool like travel idol where you could just bring with you and just vibe out on the sunsets. <laughs> it's super easy too, right? Oh, yeah, so, so yeah, that's like my whole that's like the only instrument I truly want to learn. I think but... do it. I think you can I hope. Yeah, I I'd, I'd be seeing some people travel with them, but like, yo, I wonder how that just feels like you just on the sunset on a porch yeah. somewhere just playing ukulele. That might be that guy with the ukulele. He's always on the next level. Like he's always like an next level of chill. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, like who are like some of your favorite musicians though? Oh man, um, hardest question in the world. But yeah, I feel like I I my go to is like I love Bob Dylan. I like his, his writing style. I think he's so cool. And a well, lot of a legend. <laughs> that's a legend. Of course, he's a I mean, legend. I, you can't be oh. Bob Dylan. Yeah, what else have I been listening to lately? Like I, oh man, I had a year of like Alex G was really cool this year. Um, oh god, I've been listening to a lot of Lou Reed lately. Um, Radiohead, love Radiohead, always. Uh, god, I, you know what? I like, I like music. I like anything that's good music. Um, okay, it sounds like you're into the songwriting part. That's why. That's I mean, not even like I like I I I, I like mute like. Uh, those are off the top of my head, my favorites. But like, I know, I like but most music. of them, I know, like a couple of them you mentioned, they're like really like okay, songwriting ability. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, right. oh, I dropped like Lou Reed and Bob Dylan, but Sora. I listen to a lot of Sora. I don't know. I don't know. Do you got any? Do you got any favorites right now? It's a hard question. Favorites right now. I don't know. I listen like cause my mom's like from the um, Trinidad Tobago, so I listen to a bunch of Caribbean music. That's like nice. Me. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's definitely like me. So all all the Caribbean music, that soca, <laughs> dance hall, calypso, Dancing. all that. Yeah, yeah, all that. That's like my vibe. That's beautiful. My friends be hating it though. But why y'all be hating? It's a good time, good vibe. Uh, you Maybe. probably swim. Yeah, I know. I feel like they be listening in secret. You know those friends that be hating on your music and it choices, and then their goal is to it. Totally. Um, but uh, yeah, I feel like that's what they be doing. Totally. I've been yeah, totally. seeing them with the little little bop here and there. So I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah I'm like, <laughs> no, you're exposing them to something great and new, and teaching them. Yeah. Oh, this is a good. I, I might have this one. Is there like, if you could work with like five musicians ever, like who would you want to work with? <laughs> Musicians? Yeah. Oh, okay, like you wait, can just do a song with them. I like. Yeah. I gotta work with five musicians. Do oh, anything. that's such a hard question. Okay, here. Wait, you're lucky. I have my like smart TV up with my Spotify here. Let's see. Um, I would love to work with obviously Bob Dylan. Um, Aphex Twin for sure. I love Leonard Cohen. Um, oh, Zuzu uh, is a band that I, oh, Tom York. <laughs> now I'm going to go off. Uh, go <laughs> Animal Collective. Um, oh, like Bright Eyes, like um, Tonner, uh, Connor, why is his name escaping me? Uh, the Bright Eyes. Um, Elliot Smith, someone who I love, but I'm probably missing out on like any musician who like brings joyful music. Uh, <laughs> oh, I've been loving uh, Jessica Pratt lately a lot too. Um, oh, I, like Phoebe Bridgers, like who I've loved before she was even known by any. Like I, I think she's such a great songwriter. She's so cool. Uh, I, I'm sure I listed like more than five, but uh, <laughs> no, Phoebe's a good one. I, I like Phoebe's her. She's also awesome. a good, also a great songwriter. I, I see, <laughs> I see. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, yeah, and then I got like Mozzie Star, Sade, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Big Thief, Frick, Alex G. I said him. Uh, Man, yeah, I could go on. I'm now going down a wormhole. But how did you like get started with music? Like, was it like, oh, you heard a song like, man, I want to learn how to do this, or like, 
you just like picked up the instrument one day like oh I just want to try this out like how did you like first like even get started in music that's a great question I feel like do you ever do you feel like I don't know I felt like from when like when I was really young that was kind of the method of communication that resonated with me like it was abandoning the words and communicating with um a sound or a feeling and like I, I was always someone who like if I heard a song that I really liked my body like I'd get goosebumps and I just felt like I could like that that was kind of I needed to decorate my time with noise in order to be comfortable so I just have always loved music and then I guess I've just always been searching for good <laughs> I just I just <laughs> love I'm some I have my headphones on like 24 7 I just uh I just uh really I'm obsessed with finding god I even listen to bad music like I, I just I don't know I think it's always just been a part of my interests so it's just like the sound is really just like the sound for you for sure for sure or you know if someone just drops a line that resonates um it's it's all of it it's the one thing that i think is so cool about bob dylan is that he is this songwriter but he ended up winning the nobel peace prize for poetry which is just like <laughs> yeah, that's crazy yeah so what's more, <laughs> um what is a better form of communication, poetry or music? Uh, probably music. Right? I, I feel know. like now I feel like nowadays it's music. I feel like at a certain point it was just poetry, but I feel like when she puts the sound to it, and it, like I don't know, like for me, like when I listen to music, like if I want to listen to like to be happy, I'll listen to Caribbean music. If I had to like okay, I have to like focus and work, I'll listen to like some other music you know what i'm saying it's it's also a, it's like a different feel and vibe i don't know yeah it's a language of its own yeah so I probably me personally i'd go with music i don't know there's probably people that do in poetry right now like no you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> but, no, yeah, but for, yeah, for me right now it's definitely music uh I, I, but no i gotta agree with you <laughs> yeah <laughs> imagine just like going without it it would be so boring I don't know, probably like, yeah, there was a time though, I'd definitely say poetry is definitely the one. Yeah, maybe it just depends on, depends on the the piece. Whenever Bridgerton was taking place <laughs> during that period. <laughs> yeah. God, I, said, yeah. I heard some of the poems in Bridgerton, the, the words, I said, like, oh, this is actually kind of smooth. I, I, I like it. Yeah, right. <laughs> pretty noises. It's all just pretty. <laughs> Oh, speaking of um, Netflix, like if you could do like another Netflix show, what would you want to do? Another Netflix show? Like, like a, that's one on, that's right on right now, like Stranger Things or like Ooh, Outer yeah. Banks, like something like that. If you could do like a, be a part of another Netflix show, which one would you be? God, I, mean, I, <laughs> I love Black Mirror. Probably like an anthology. Ooh, when is Black Mirror coming back? I don't know. I haven't been like it's keeping been a while. Back. It's been a while. I was like, yo. Do you have a favorite Black Mirror episode? I don't. I, I'm I, trying, I, have to, I have to really think about this before I... Miss- I <laughs> They're all disturbing. Yeah, I, had to, I would have to really... I might have to go back. It's been a while. I forgot Black Mirror, though. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. It's, I think it was super cool to do an anthology series just to drop in for one episode. and then. <laughs> I think the last season they had was only like three episodes, two, something like that, three or four episodes. That's good. Oh yeah. man, I, they do like, it. I can't remember. They like drop the episodes out of order. Yeah, no, it's just I don't know that show. I that show was really good. I don't know what's going on with that though. I, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't because I, they don't think they say they got canceled, but also the that I haven't heard any news about Black Bear. Yeah, uh, they're just like that. Love that. Yeah, I might have to go rewatch that. I'm gonna have to come back with an answer for that later. So. <laughs> Because they, oh, I have to really think I haven't watched it in so long. Yeah, you gotta be in the mood to be like, I don't know, disturbed, <laughs> worried, <laughs> to be stressed out. If you could describe um, Gina, uh, Jenny and Georgia season two with Jenny three words, <laughs> Georgia, yeah. with season two with three words, what, uh, what would those words be? Hmm, that's a good one. I'd say uh, emotion. Uh, discussion and charm you just got the same charm that it brought last time around which is was so like nice to see so 
I know um Ab I know Abby and Jenny have like a, a love hate relationship. Like do we see those two ever like come together probably later in season two? Just like I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean I like there's a lot of yeah, I mean uh in very in their very idiosyncratic ways, they find comfort in um their differences and but i think in a lot of ways they're they're very very alike so um yeah i wouldn't be too surprised if you if you see them together at one point yeah because like rivals become you know best friends at some point in their life so <laughs> yeah they do <laughs> <laughs> okay uh what do you think fans would be like most excited to see by Jenny and georgia this see well uh i just think that they can expect to feel that same familiarity and the connection that they felt to the first season. Um, I guess, you know, well, it, it picks up right where it left off. So um, yeah, I just really hope that people get the same comfort out of, out of it that they did when it first came out, which was like the beginning of the pandemic, I'm pretty sure. So, and obviously yeah. we're still in shit's still tough so i hope that we can be there for people in the same way and give them that same familiar comfortable feeling the last yeah. one did all the while like we really at season two i'm sure um it really starts to get into it we start to talk about some really important topics so uh you know i just hope that it resonates with, with people what episode are you like most excited for for people to see Mm. I know. I know. Usually, somebody like they had like their favorite episode, like episode six, five, seven. Like, oh god, I hope I can remember which one it was. I feel like a really, really exciting episode for everybody would be ah oh, the last episode. Okay, outside the last episode. Okay. Outside. <laughs> hmm. That's the episode where everything explodes. Uh, well, yeah, I'll get you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like um Oh, there's some good stuff in episode eight, from what I recall. I hope I'm not I hope I'm getting that right. But uh yeah, we're trying to avoid giving any spoilers, it really starts to get like fun by by the last few episodes. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> do you like uh watch the episodes? Like kind of like you're in it, like you know what kind of happens. Like, do you like still watch episodes to see how it comes out, or you're like, I don't care about it? Well, funny enough, we have a like we have to do for, like stuff like this, like promo stuff, like PR stuff. So um a handful of us get the season, we get to we watch the season before it comes out just so we have talking points and that's usually when I when I when I get to see it and then once it's out I'm like almost like <laughs> I hear about it all the time so I, I don't really need to is it uh, weird like seeing yourself like do you ever get a moment like oh it's, it's like weird seeing myself on camera or like in doing this or such and such yeah I mean I a lot of actors will tell you that they don't watch themselves but I'm the type of actor that like I really I do watch myself I need to watch myself otherwise I need to like I can't learn what not to do and I guess the idea is one day you want to watch yourself and not hate it. Um, that's the goal. It's, you know, <laughs> obviously not there yet, but um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's tough to watch yourself for sure. I'm sure anyone would say this. No, like, I, like I hate rewatching my podcast. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll wait for like the comments to like, all right, what did I do wrong? I'll go off of you guys. <laughs> back in time and redo it and... yeah like, no, just let me know what i did wrong guys and i'll promise i'll try to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's uh yeah that's that is, exactly exactly that like you try to grow from here from here well if you want to call them mistakes we're just we're yeah just... no but i'd be like so shy but no i don't want to go watch myself anytime people be like i'm like no I'm good. right <laughs> <laughs> that's fine let yeah. me know what i did i'll try and make it up for you guys yeah <laughs> There's bad. I know. I just there's so many other things I could watch. <laughs> or this. No, true, true. I rather watch somebody else's TV. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, which like character do you like relate most to outside of like Abby, of course, because you play her. But like, what's like actually like what's your favorite character outside of Abby and Ginny and Georgia? Probably Austin, her brother. Okay. Little okay, kid. Okay. I connect most with his character. I think. 
Okay, I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is what are like five things that your fans don't know about you? Don't know about me. Well, I hope I hope they know nothing. <laughs> um, I really I have a lot. I have like a huge toolbox full of power tools. Um, which is one. I oh, have you just have them to have or you be like using them? I've been using them. Oh I've been, <laughs> I'm renovating my whole house right now. I'm lucky enough to like um like I kind of bought my first apartment and I've been like renovating it all by myself. So I am not I can't even make this up. I have like there's a buzz saw right there on the floor. <laughs> Table saw. But um <laughs> that's one, I guess. Uh another one is I have like a, a massive DVD collection, like a movie collection. It's that's not, gonna be, not that's gonna be worth something though in the future. Because <laughs> those are definitely gonna be worth something in the future. Yeah. Or, like in 20 years, people are like, yo, because it's impossible. It's hard to get DVDs now. So I I'm know. Like, oh, Hopefully, <laughs> um, like, I don't know. They're probably it's probably gonna come back again soon. They're portable this way, but I like having them in a physical way uh that sounded so funny i drove across america last year this year no last year no it was this year from where from where like from where to man i i started like i did a movie in new orleans and then i ended up driving from new orleans back to toronto and then from toronto to los angeles and like stopped along the way do you, was, like would you ever do that again i'm absolutely. like so oh, okay been- cool <laughs> it was it was such a time um i like yeah no i i kind of like i would like live on the road if i could but it's so unsustainable <laughs> you start eating really bad but yeah yeah i would recommend it to anyone was it just you uh no it was me and my partner okay cool, cool. I, okay I'm, i remember i go like road trips with my friends and it's like the most uncomfortable rides ever. oh my god you have to <laughs> yeah i hate like, my legs sorry. be hurting. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. I'm just catching plates on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, could you imagine doing that with somebody that you couldn't stand? Like, do you have like, do you have one? Uh, do you, like, do you have one person in mind that you would like want to drive across America with? No, because they all it's like actually- after after a certain point, I'd be annoyed. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I'd That's be like, me. why are we doing it? But like, like, my legs be too long. I'm like, yo, my legs be hurt. Every time I walk out the car, I'd be falling out. I'd be in the road trip. <laughs> like, yo, you got a road trip. I'd be like, no, I'd be hating it. So I remember yeah. one time we drove, come from uh, Seattle, Washington originally. I remember one time we did LA to Seattle and I was like, I was like, I'm not doing this again. I was like, this is my last time. I'm going to catch a flight back. You guys are doing this. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You definitely need a good cry after a couple hours in the car. No, yeah, but I'd be, I definitely, but no, it's it was cool though. I mean, I guess it was good. I totally hear you. It depends on the vibe. It depends on the, on the trip. <laughs> oh yeah. What is like some of like places you saw in the states that were, like? Do you see any places during like the states that you're like, oh my god, this is actually beautiful? Yeah, I loved Austin. Austin's great. Um, I just Austin, a, Texas. I, fun in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love we did like a music festivals and it's super, like, yeah, it's super cool there. God, I liked Albuquerque. I liked. Um, where else did we love? I love New Orleans. New Orleans was so cool. Man, I like. I'll forget. I'm probably missing so many places that we stopped, but I found the most joy in just like driving through abandoned towns and and something across like the weirdest coolest places and i couldn't even tell you where we were like did you go so to that, any like you went to like the haunted places like yeah we, we went to the haunted places <laughs> for real uh, like <laughs> okay and i can do that i would be like no 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 <laughs> Yeah, oh, too many scary movies. <laughs> no, no, it was so. I'm trying to wreck my brain where this was, but we stumbled across this little, um, what we thought was a ghost town somewhere. I want to say in New Mexico, but it turned out to be. It looked really abandoned, but it was actually this like little art community full of like, it, like I, I can't even explain it. It was there were sculptures everywhere, and there was artists living in these like abandoned buildings. It was so weird, but it felt like home. 
So if I ever disappear, you'd be in Albuquerque, not, New Mexico. That's where I'll be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there like a scene that you're like very proud of a shooting during Genie and Georgia? Like, man, I killed that. <laughs> uh, God. It can't even be from the first season too. Like, I mean, yeah, I'm sure there. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I think a lot of the stuff with um Maine. Uh, <laughs> I'm racking my brain for for a specific for you, but um, I remember like we were always really like we had a lot of fun with the um ensemble cast, like with the my my castmates who are part of Maine, like Sarah Wayglass, Tony. Chelsea Clark we were always like really happy with how our dynamic was so um any scene that we all have together was was something that we were like really pumped about what can we, yeah what can we expect for Meng I forgot to ask that what can we expect for Meng oh um, god you gotta find it. out you gotta watch <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look good at the end there did it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was, that was, I hope we uh, yeah I don't know Every, it, that was an explosive ending though so okay it, it definitely was <laughs> It'll be interesting okay. <laughs> if they end that. Uh, my last question for you today is like, what is your all time like favorite movie and favorite TV show? Oh man, <laughs> other tough question. I guess my all time favorite movie, and I, I stick with this one just because I've been saying it for years, and I still love the movie. But there's a movie called uh, "The Selfish Giant," who's that was directed by Cleo Barnard, who's a British director that just is so beautiful and gutting and um, like real to me. It's the only film that can really make me like snot cry. Um, And then Eraserhead, David Lynch. I love David Lynch. He's my favorite. (laughs) Um, Or I kind of watched The Science of Sleep the other day again for, for the second time and it's such a great movie too. Uh, Barry Lyndon, like Kubrick. I don't know. Uh, I'll stick with the selfish giant. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> well, I appreciate. Oh no, yeah, you got to do TV show. What's your oh, name? if you, if you're interested in knowing the TV show, I feel like um, True Detective is the best TV show ever. <laughs> that's a good choice. I like, I like True Detective. That's a that's a good choice. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you taking your time out to speak with me today. Um, can't wait to see season two. All the hopefully everybody can find peace in season two. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you so much for wanting to chat with me. This has been, it's been super fun. I'm uh, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. Bye, man. I'll talk to you later. Have a rest of your day. You too. Bye. <laughs>